Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Thanksgiving for those of you that are in America. Uh, that was uh, actually just yesterday. Um, and today's a day off, um, it tends to be a day off after Thanksgiving um, uh, for most people. So uh, I'm off today. So I thought I'd talk to you about um, what I think is a pretty interesting um, subject that many of you will want to understand better. Um, and uh, is with regard to uh, the case distribution um, throughout the whole number ranges. Um, many of you will have um, heard my responses or seen my responses saying that we will understand uh, the, uh, the numbers better uh, in January. And what will happen in January is that we'll have the SEAC data for the first time. Um, the, if you're checking your SEAC data, your own SEAC case or your own case number in the SEAC status check system at the moment, you'll find that you can't check that for any DV2024 case. Um, that's because the data is made available for the first time um, on the 1st of January. Um, it's a programming mistake, in my opinion. Uh, there's no good reason to delay the availability of the data that way. And clearly, the data is already, we know the data is already in the system. Um, they load the data into the system much earlier uh, than they make it available to us. But for whatever reason, for each year, uh, it's only available from January the 1st. OK. So um, that data will be extracted, and Zarthesius will plot that data into his, uh, into his magic website. And we'll be able to visualize the data um, uh, and understand the distribution of cases and holes um, across the whole number range. Okay, so um, what I want to do is talk you through an example of that to show you what that means. What, are, what do I mean by a distribution um, and, and why is it important? Um, so I want to explain. And I'm going to use the region of Asia uh, to explain. I'm first of all going to explain a, how 2021 worked because it's kind of clear in the charts. Uh, it, it, it's a sort of a nice clear example. That this is something that um, I've explained before, but um, uh, but I think it'll be new news to a lot of you. And so I'm going to take 21 data and show you how I can explain better what actually happened to create the distribution of data that we see. Uh, and then I'm going to apply that to DV2024 um, and give somewhat of a prediction uh, for 24. Although I have to say, I don't have uh, the highest case numbers for Nepal and Asia, uh, sorry, Nepal and Iran that I should have in order to make this uh, a little bit more real. But I think I'll be able to show you what the distribution could look like in DV2024 um, for. Uh, for the Asia region. Now, this isn't going to cover other regions. Um, uh, this distribution, this this concept of this distribution and the way it changes over the number ranges um, is specific to uh, Africa, Asia, and Europe. It doesn't occur in Oceania and uh, South America. Um, and it changes every year a little bit. The countries that are involved change every year. But Asia stays static, and so it's a fairly easy region to ex explain the concept with. And um, it's just going to be a little bit easier to sort of understand the concept that way. And so we're going to talk about Asia. So if, if you're interested in Asia, you're going to be particularly pleased with what you're seeing here. And if you are not so interested in Asia, if you're from Europe or from Africa, you'll still gain from this video, and you'll understand better what I mean by the distribution. Um, and what that can mean for high case numbers and so on. So let me first of all show you, um, let me just, uh, so that I can see, so that I can actually see what I'm talking about here. Um, let me show you the data as shown on Zarthesius's website for DV2021. Um, and I'll just talk through that a little bit and make sure you understand that, first of all. So here we go. All right, so this is, uh, this is the data for DV21. I'll see if I can make this a little bigger. Right. Um, okay. So, as I say, we're looking at financial year or fiscal year um, DV2021. 
Um, and this is Asia. I've already switched over, so this is Asia. You can do the same thing yourself um, at Zarthesius' website, which you can see the link there, dvcharts.zarthesius.xyz. Um, okay, so you can you can see here the blue color is holes, and you can see that the yellow and green and other colors are actual cases, okay? Now, in DV2021, the case numbers went up to about 37,000. You can see at the right here, right-hand side. But you can see that there was an increase in the number of holes that happened after 10,000. This point here is 10,000, right? And it happened again after 20,000. So before, uh, before 10,000, the number of holes per 1,000 cases were about 400 holes per 1,000 cases. And about 60% of the cases, so 600 cases, were real cases per 1,000, right? So a 60% uh, density rate or a 40% holes rate, depending on which way you want to look at it, right? So, and then you can see that the holes increased between 10,000 and 20,000, and the holes increased again between 20,000 and going all the way up to 37,000. And so that means that uh, high case numbers, when you're in this, this later phase, high case numbers can extend quite late into number ranges because there's a lot of holes in later number ranges, right? And this happens in Africa, Asia, and Europe. This uh, staggered sort of density, um, uh, an increasing number of holes happens in each of those three regions. Why does it happen? Well, it, so just, I, I've explained this before, but just as sort of a, a quick primer on that. If, um, if you have a region where two countries, let's say Nepal and Iran, uh, have, let's say, 40% of the entries um, for each of them, so 40% of the actual entries uh, you know, are from Nepal and 40% are from um, Iran, then the rest of Asia is only going to get 20% of the winners, right? And if there are a lot of, uh, a lot of entries from a couple of countries, in this case, Nepal and Iran, those countries will be limited during the draw where uh, there will be so many entries from Nepal and so many entries from Iran that the government during the draw says, okay, we're going to stop taking any more selectees from these countries, these two countries, at this point and at this point. We'll wait until Nepal has about 3,800 selectees, and we're going to wait until uh, Iran gets about between five and 6,000 selectees, depending on the year. And then we're going to take no more selectees from those two countries, and we'll just continue with the rest of Asia until we've got enough selectees. That means that all of Nepal and uh, Iran's selectees will be concentrated in a lower number range than the whole range, right? And this happens every year. And every year, there's usually someone who says, oh, that's incredibly unfair. Why should Nepal have only low case numbers? Why should Iran have only low, low case numbers? What you have to understand is that the chance of selection in Nepal and Iran is much lower than the other countries because they're cut off early this way. Okay, so a much heavier density of, um, of, of winners in Nepal and in Iran in the early case numbers, and then they suddenly stop. Um, and, it, and the rest of the winners that should have been there were just disqualified straight away, and they became extra holes, right? So if you're from Nepal and Iran, you've actually beaten the odds of the rest of, the, rest of Asia. And in a sense, your reward is that you would have a lower case number. And this is also, to an extent, why we see the accept uh, um, strategy where they, uh, where they limit the number of cases for Nepal and Iran that are made available each month on the visa bulletin because of this same, the same thing. It's the, the um, you know, overwhelming density of case numbers for these two specific countries. And again, this same thing happens in Africa and it happens in Europe. Um, but with more countries in Africa in particular, and with varying countries in Europe. So um, so those are harder to understand, but you'll understand the concepts from what I'm showing you here. Okay, so now you know why we get more holes in the later number ranges, right? 
And what we can do is if we take note of these numbers and we add a couple of other numbers that we know, we can actually plot this and see if this, if this explanation is a true explanation, right? So I'm saying that Nepal cases in DV2021 were all concentrated under 10,000. And then Iranian cases were all concentrated under 20,000. And the rest of Asia went up to 37,000, approximately, okay? So remember those, two, those three numbers, 10, 20, and 37, okay? So we'll remove that. What I've done is I've put those numbers in, 10, 20, and 37, into this, this spreadsheet that you can see here. Um, and I've also taken the number of selectees for DV 2021, uh, which was 3801 for Nepal and 6001 for Iran. And I've used the 2019 through 21 entry data to figure out what the actual, uh, you know, what the average, um, uh, the average number of uh, derivatives would have been per case. In fact, I could probably have just taken the 21 numbers, but I, I was calculating as a, this spreadsheet is set up for a 24 prediction. So um, that's why I'm taking the average, but I actually could have just taken the, uh, the 163. But anyway, by, by working that out, um, I apply the number of derivatives to the number of selectees to find out the number of cases that there must have been for Nepal and for Iran. And then the rest of Asia had that many cases. And I know the total number of cases because we've got the data, right? Um, 13,248 is the actual number of cases that we had in DV 2021 for Asia. Um, and so now I know the number of cases. And I also know how many thousands or how many blocks of 1,000 each of those case numbers are spread over. And so we should see an average of 236 cases per 1,000 for Nepal, 158 cases per 1,000 for Iran, and 209 cases per 1,000 for the rest of Asia. The rest of Asia being all the other countries that are in Asia that are not Iran and Nepal right? Um, so ROA, as I call it, rest of Asia. Okay, so that's uh, pretty interesting. Now, these are averages. These are not going to be precise. You could have one uh, batch of a thousand numbers that has more or less than the average, but it's all about averaging. It's all about statistical averaging, right? Now, if we take those numbers, the numbers that we've got there, 236, 158, and 209, and we plot them onto a distribution, which I've done here, then you'll see that Naram, uh, Nepal would have 236 case, cases per 1,000 for the first 10,000 cases. Iran would have 158 for the first 20,000 cases, 158 cases per 1,000, right? And the rest of Asia would have 209 cases for all of the number ranges, right up to 30, uh, actually, it should be up to I'm sorry, this, this last line should be gone. Should be up to there. It should be up to 37,000. Okay, now if you do that and you, and you draw a chart, how close does my chart get to the reality of what actually happened? So if I take the, if I take the math that I've done to understand this and I had predicted how the chart would look, would this be pretty accurate to what actually happened? Well, my chart says that we have about 60% um, of cases uh, in the first 10,000 and 40% holes. And then it goes down to just under 47, uh, 40%, probably what, about 37% or something. Um, 37, yeah, 37, 38% for the range between 10 and 20,000 and an ongoing 20% from that point forward. What does the official data um, distribution look like? Let's have a look at that. It's got 60% up to 10,000. It's got a, just under 40% there for uh, the next 10,000 and around about 20% for uh, for the next uh, 17,000 after, after 20,000, right? So in other words, my predicted distribution is identical to the actual distribution. Right, and that's not particularly surprising. It's not that uh, you know it's just simple math, right? So, but it does help you understand once you understand that the accuracy of this method, 
you can then see, okay, so uh, if we look back at this chart and we look at the colors here, there's this many Iranian cases in the first 10,000 and this many in the second 10,000, right? And uh, Nepalese cases in blue here will be just that, that batch. You can begin to understand not only the shape of the distribution, but you can understand better um, why the distribution occurs and where the, the Nepalese and Iranian cases will be out of the picture, okay? So if we can do that in reality against 21 data, can we do that against DV2024 data? And I think we can. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at this, this uh, chart here. Now, there's a couple of things I don't know. So I'm going to show you um, some, exa some rough examples of this and just uh, to try and sort of help you understand uh, the prediction. But I'm getting conflicting data in terms of, um, in terms of the highest case number in uh, Nepal and Iran. I'd asked a few days ago for people to give me input on the highest numbers. Now, if I really knew what the uh, highest case numbers were for Nepal and Iran, um, th this would be a very easy prediction for me to make. I could actually say, here's exactly what the chart will look like. But as it is, I've only got a rough prediction, and um, uh, and I'm not entirely comfortable with it. But there's a couple of things on here that I can uh, that I can be fairly sure sure of. Okay. Now, first of all, I think there are fourteen thousand four hundred cases in. Uh, Asia in DV 2024. That's a calculated number. It's not a real number. It's a guesstimate on my part um, based on the total number of selectees and, and an average derivative rate, right? So it could be a bit inaccurate, but it'll be in that sort of range. Um, we know there are 3,863 Nepalese uh, selectees, which at the average derivative rate from those three earlier years would mean there would be 2,395 Nepalese cases. For Iran, we know there are 5,077 selectees, and at their average derivative rate, which you can see is quite a bit higher than Nepal, which is why I've separated them out, um, we can see that there would be 2,675 cases. And since 14.4 is, um, is my perceived maximum, and actually I should bet, let me make this bigger so you can see that a little bit easier. Um, but uh, yeah, 1444 is my perceived maximum. That's essentially leaves 9,300 cases um, for the rest of Asia. That's what I think we've got. Okay, so let's then talk about where these, uh, where these countries are likely to cut off, be limited, right? And this is the bit that I don't know. I'm kind of frustrated I don't know, but I don't know. We think that Asia full range goes to 55, 55,000, roughly. Um, it could be a bit higher than that or a bit lower than that. I don't know precisely. This is a guesstimate on my part based on information I've had reported to me. That's equivalent to the 37 number in the other data, right? And, um, and last year in DV23, um, Nepal cut off by 20,000 and Iran cut off by 15,000 actually a flip from 21 where um, where the, it was the other way around, where Nepal cut off before Iran, right? And those that flip happens when there's a change in the number of entries from one country or the other in comparison to the other country and in comparison to the rest of Asia. So, um, you know, so is that going to happen this, this year? I don't know. Are there going to be more uh, Nepalese entries and less Iranians? Um, I don't know. It's kind of frustrating. I'm guessing here, but I've had to make some sort of guess, if you like, to show you how the picture could look. So what I'm what I've done is I've said, okay, the number ranges are higher. Um, let's say Nepal is cut off by fifteen thousand uh, by twenty five thousand. I did get uh, one of my regular viewers did tell me that uh, he believes uh, tech pirate. By the way, um, he believes. Uh, that um, Nepal cuts off by 15,000. But then I got other people who told me much higher numbers, much higher numbers. So I'm just taking a sort of a mid-range number here and saying, let's say it's 25, uh, which would give us 96 cases per thousand. And for Iran, I'm going to take 20,000 for the same sort of reasoning. 
Um, but I would love to get these numbers, to plug these numbers into the chart to see how that would look, right? Um, and then, as I, as I mentioned before, rest of Asia will carry on um, until 55, right? So how does that look on a chart? This is how it looks. Um, you, here's 100% up here. You can see there's going to be a much, if my numbers are accurate, if my cutoff numbers for Nepal and Iran are accurate, this is how the chart would look. Um, there would be a 60% holes rate for the first thousand, uh, few thousand cases up until case number 20,000 because that's where uh, Nepal cuts off, right? Uh, sorry, Iran. That's where Iran cuts off. Then, then there'd be a, um, another sort of drop down, another cliff, um, and we'd be at about, what's that, 25%. So there would be 75% holes until case number 25,000 and then a continuing holes rate of around about 17 or 18 percent, um, uh, all the way through. Actually, 17 percent, um, all the way through to the end. Right now, that means that for every thousand uh, later on, for every thousand uh, case numbers, there are 830 cases which are not even there. Right, they're holes, and so the the movement of the visa bulletin, if we get to those number ranges could be quite fast because if you want to reveal, let's say you want to reveal a thousand more people for interview or a thousand more cases for interview, then you have to increase that number by, you know, over 5,000, 6,000 or something because the, the, the number of cases per thousand is much lower at that point than it was in the earlier point, right? So here's how it could look. This is kind of a prediction. Now, I don't do predictions in general. And so, and, and I've explained to you why this prediction is somewhat uh, somewhat suspect because I'm guessing uh, where Nepal and Iran will cut off. But if I can get those numbers, it would, or any, you know, I could easily plot them into this spreadsheet and give a more accurate sort of uh, idea of how this distribution would look. And of course, we'll have this distribution in, uh, what, just over a month from now anyway, about um, five, six weeks from now. Um, on on January the 1st, right? So you don't really need this data. You know, it's not going to be the end of the world if we don't have this uh, this data. But by understanding this principle and how this all works out, um, you'll understand better when you see the distribution on January the 1st, you'll see uh, much better and you'll understand much better what's going on and why that distribution happens. So I think this, uh, this is an important concept that people um, should understand and I'm hoping that you're grasping what I'm explaining here. Um, I think that's probably all I need to cover. Um, uh, the, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the holes number is here, by the way. So, yeah, 60% to start with, then 73.4%, and then 83% um, in, in later numbers. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier in terms of the number of holes. So the number of holes is really important. Um, and of course you can have the same number of cases, uh, in two different years, but one year could be quite condensed and very few holes. And the next year could have many holes and then that will spread the case numbers out, which is why I always tell people don't try and compare this year to some other year because you have to understand what the density um, of that year was compared to this year. And if we just look back at Zarthisius's charts here, um, and again, we'll look, at, um, we'll look at some of the other years. If we look at, uh, let's look at 22, there's the whole, whole, all the regions together. You can see there's a lot of blue. But if you look back at some of the earlier years, sometimes people say to me, oh, how about, uh, you know, this year, you know, this year has got the same number of selectees as that year. I think it's going to be like this. And it's normally not correct because, you know, you can see here um, that some years have a lot more blue, a lot more holes than other years, right? And if we go right back to a year like 2017, and let's switch this to Asia, for example, you can see there were almost no holes in DV 2017, very, very small number of holes. So even if we had the same number of selectees as a previous year, you would have to then say, okay, but how many holes are there? Um, and where's the cutoff for this country and that country? 
um, which is why it's a useless effort trying to compare one year to another year. Um, just doesn't doesn't work, right? Um, so anyway, so uh, you know that's you can come and have a look at this data. So Arthesius has loaded up all the data that we have going back to I think 2013, which was the earliest file that we had. Um, yeah, that was 2013. Um, and the data was a little bit different. We only we only um, we were only able to capture, uh, or we were only capturing in 2013, 2014. We were only capturing um, uh, actual scheduled cases, I believe. Um, so there's less data to be seen there. But um, you know, you can go back and have a look at some of these other years, 2018 there. All right. So anyway, I'm hoping you're understanding uh, my explanations, and I hope that was interesting to you. Um, Please do let me know uh, your thoughts about this video, but by all means, uh, drop me a comment uh, under this video. As ever, you can always ask me questions there in the YouTube channel, but you should probably also uh, come to my blog at britsimonsays.com and ask questions on my blog, because the way um, questions are asked and organized there is a lot better. I can keep the thread, uh, the trail of questions much easier over there. And therefore, I tend to reliably answer on my blog, whereas I don't 100% reliably uh, always answer on the YouTube channel. So if you want a question answered, please ask on my blog, blog BritSimonSays.com. Um, but please do subscribe to this channel on my YouTube channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, if it's made things a little bit more clear to you, if you have a better understanding now. Uh, I'd appreciate that. And if there's anything that you don't understand, um, you know, please do feel free to uh, to ask me uh, any clarifying question you, you'd you'd like about this data. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks now. Bye bye.